All right, so it's uh, really good to see everyone virtually and locally gathered together to sing, hear the message of the Lord, and uh, to fellowship together. And so that's a real blessing. So we're going to begin with prayer and ask the Lord to bless this service. And then I'm going to ask the group and Heider to sing a song. And we'll turn our cameras over there and hopefully everything will work. And so we're going to pray and uh, then we'll have our first song from, from you guys. All right? So let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. We do pray that you'd help all of us to be uh, just in the mind to receive your word and the music and the fellowship and the things related to thee, Lord. I pray that you bless and Lord would give you the glory. And Lord, I pray that you bless those that listen in online and wherever they are, that you bless them and help them in their lives and homes and Lord, just in our faith. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So thank you so much. That was a real blessing. What a lovely name, the name of Jesus. All right. So uh, if you want to take your Bible and turn to 1 Samuel 22, verse 1. It says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave 
Adullam. When his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. So here's King David, and what's he doing? He's hiding in a cave. Man, he's hiding. Now here's a king. Why? Because somebody wants to kill him. It's King Saul, who's jealous, but David has now been anointed by God as the king, the true king. And he's hiding. And so he writes some psalms. Let's turn to Psalm 17 and uh, look at verse 17, verse 8. Prayer of David. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. That's Psalm 17, verse 8. Now turn to Psalm 36. Let's turn over to chapter 36 and look at verse number 7. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. And so here's David, and uh, he's, he's hiding from Saul at one point, but all through his life, he's asking God to keep him and protect him. And we need that. We need protection. Turn to Psalm 57. And look at verse number one. It says, To the chief musician of David when he fled from Saul in the cave. So this is the actual psalm that's attributed to David when he was in the cave. He said, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. So we need to come to God when we're in danger, when it seems like things are against us. We can come to him and we can hide in God. Psalm Amen. 63 and verse 7 says the Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. So again, he's on the run, man on the run. And verse 7 because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. And so there's four things we see. Number one, God hid David. That's Psalm 17. And David trusted in the Lord in that environment. And we need to trust in the Lord. And he made God his refuge. And he rejoiced there. And so this is what we can do. We can hide in the Lord. And we can come to the Lord. And we can bring our problems to the Lord. Now, turn to the book of Zephaniah in chapter 1. Zephaniah chapter 1. The name of Zephaniah means Yahweh hides. Okay? So, this was a man who was uh, ministering during the end of the reign of the kings of Judah. Okay, before the Babylonians came in and conquested the land and destroyed the temple. He was the last of the nine of the 12 minor prophets. So the other three minor prophets, they ministered after the captivity. Okay, And so Zephaniah is the ninth of the 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament, the last before Judah's fall to Babylon, and the other three were during the Babylonian captivity and they were Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, okay? And so this book, the book of Zephaniah, mentions the day of the Lord more than any other Old Testament book. Now for them, the day of the Lord was basically National Doomsday, okay? I mean, it was coming and it had been coming for a long time. God showed great mercy to Judah and to Israel. And he was very long-suffering with them. And so we find this day, the day of the Lord, is mentioned in this book. And so look at, it says, verse 14 of chapter 1, The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly. 
even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Okay, so strong men are going to be like little babies. Okay, mm -hmm. if somebody takes a hook and sticks it literally, a big fish hook, in your jaw and ties you to a horse and starts pulling you down the road, mm -hmm. you probably cry like a little baby too, amen? And so it's saying right here that these mighty men are going to cry bitterly, okay? And so we find that uh, Zephaniah was born during the reign of wicked Manasseh, okay? And he was probably, as a young child, even hidden, okay, for his own protection. And so we can look at different people down through history that God hid, okay? So who can you think of? Remember Moses? His mother saw that he was a goodly child. She hid him three months, okay? And we can find that with Jesus. Do you remember when Herod wanted to kill Jesus? Amen? Yes, sir. Do you remember that? What happened? God put it on the heart of Joseph to take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And that's where they hid. Okay? So they're, they're hiding. Why are they hiding? Because that day it was not conducive to have faith in God. You know, isn't it amazing how things repeat themselves? And so we're, li we're living in a culture where things are quickly changing and we don't know what the future holds, but the whole gist of this message is that God is in control and he can take care of us no matter what. Okay? Amen. Amen. No matter what the environment, no matter what's going on with governmental issues and all moral issues, all these different things, God can protect his people, and he has. Amen. And so... In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, in verse 13, it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, Amen. that you may be able to bear it. So God has an escape route. Okay? And so... Things are changing, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, they were changing in Zephaniah's day, in his whole life, during the ministry of this wicked king, Manasseh. And so, Zephaniah's message was one of judgment. Judah had turned their back on God after Hezekiah's reign, and Manasseh, his oldest son, got control of the kingdom. And he was a very wicked king. So we can be going along in, you know, a democratic situation or a republic, and you've got a real good president or a good prime minister, and then all of a sudden things change, and one doesn't have the same view of that one that had moral law as the basis for what they did. And so Manasseh was the 14th king of Judah, the oldest son of Hezekiah, and he reigned 55 years and was followed by Ammon, who reigned two years. And again, both were wicked kings. Okay? And so this was a very evil day. It wasn't an easy day. And there were people that needed an escape route. Okay? And so we also find that in the time frame of Elijah. In 1 Kings 17... We find there was a pronouncement there would be no dew or rain. So Elijah is preaching against Ahab and his wicked king. He promised that this would happen by the word of the Lord. So God knows the future. God showed Elijah what was going to happen. And this got him in grave danger. Because Jezebel, Ahab's wife, she wanted to kill this preacher. Because he just, he just told the truth. And he needed a place to hide. And uh, turn to 1 Kings chapter 17 in your Bible. And look at verse number 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, 
said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Now, right now in, in the United States, we're getting record heat. Okay, now not at this moment, but this, this past year. And in Canada, all these fires and everything. And it's at the same time, there's disregard in a great way for the Bible. It's very similar to this time frame in 1 Kings chapter 17. And it says, verse 2, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and notice, hide thyself. So God is telling him where to go, what to do in this environment. Now, I'm not advocating that we uh, all just prepare to go hide ourselves, but I'm saying that God, if, if the danger comes, he knows where to put you, okay? Mm -hmm. And he knows the best plan for us. And he said, hide by the brook Cherith, that is before Judah, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. And so God Amen. is providing place to go and provisions from the raven. That's pretty amazing. And so we find that's a way out, okay? God has a way out. He has a way for us to go. He has a way out. And 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 4, And it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. So here's Jezebel. She's trying to kill Elijah, but she wants all the preachers dead. You know, it's a bad day when people hate the preaching of God's word because it's there's things in there that's against what they're doing. Amen. And so these prophets of the Lord were in jeopardy by Jezebel that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and what did he do? He hid them by 50 in a cave. Okay. So he, he, he took care of them with bread and water. And in verse 13, was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by 50 in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And so God has a way out and he has a way in. He, he yeah. hid them in the cave and God has a way up. Okay. Now, not all the prophets were saved. Some of them had to die. But listen, we've got a way up. Amen. You see, nobody can get to you or persecute you or do anything to you when you're in heaven. Amen? Amen. And so there's a way up. And so Elijah, we find later on, he went up by a whirlwind. It was the only way out. Okay? And so we too have a way up. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And what's that way? It's called the rapture. Mm -hmm. Amen. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we see God has a way for us to go up. If things get real rough, he can come and take us out of this world. And guess what? You won't have to die when the rapture takes place. If you're still alive when the Lord comes. 1 Thessalonians chapter Number four, look at verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, notice, which are alive. So here's people that are alive. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And notice, to meet the Lord in the air. So this is a time frame like Elijah, when people, not just one person, but a whole bunch of people are going to get to go to heaven without death. That's a way out. Amen. And that's a way up. We have that promise in our Bible. Amen. Now, again, in Zephaniah's day, it was a rough day. It was a tough day. We've seen this repeated over and over in our Bible. We've seen cultures that go into apostasy and implode. Of course, 
We can go all the way back to the days of Noah. And God said, that's the way it's going to be when he comes. Just like the days of Noah. Things will get rough. It will get harder. We read that in 1 Peter. We read that in Jude. We read that in other places. We see from the teachings of Jesus. It's going to get, it's going to get tough. Okay? And do you, anybody notice any changes since you were a child in society? Well, when I was a child, we didn't have to lock our doors or worry about all these shootings or uh, have all these concerns about um, all these things, your car getting stolen while you're sitting at a stoplight and you happen to be in it. You know, people would steal cars, but they wouldn't do it when people were still in it. Amen? And so things are going to get tough. And so back in Zephaniah, so that's where we're, that's our text. In Zephaniah, I want to look at some things. And uh, first of all, we can compare that day to the day in which we live. Now let's look at some things that were going on. First of all, people were getting in the way of others coming to God and having faith in God. Look at chapter 1 and verse 3. God said, I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven, the fish of the sea, and the stumbling blocks of the wicked. Okay? And I will cut off man from off the land. So, what is this stumbling blocks of the wicked? You know what that is? That's people getting in the way of others having faith in God. And they're creating a stumbling block. Now, when I was a kid... A lot of older folks were being stepping stones to help people to God. But in this day and age, we're seeing more and more people turning their back on God. That's what they're doing. And so that is not a good, good society to raise a child, but I'll tell you what, that's what's going on. We're not getting the reinforcement of the leadership of society whether in education or political or uh, wherever, like we once did. Would everybody agree with that? It's not the same, is it? Yes, sir. Not quite the same. And so people are becoming stumbling blocks. Now, there's all kinds of ways that that can happen, and we are seeing that. And so also we find there was all kinds of idolatry. That's verse 4 and 5. And people were not following God's lead. We're not following God's lead in the days of Zephaniah. Look at verse number 6. And them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have what? Not sought the Lord. And so people aren't seeking the Lord. This is when I was a child on Sunday morning. Most of the traffic was going to church. It wasn't going out to play out in the water on a boat, okay? So here, it says, They have not sought the Lord, now notice, nor inquired for him. Now that's why we have church, isn't it? We want to seek the Lord, and we want to inquire after him. We want to know what God is saying. What does God want? And so that's very important. They wasn't doing that. And it went to the place where they're actually living contrary to what God said. It's like, I don't care what God says. I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's what they were doing in verse 8. Notice. And it shall come to pass the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such are clothed with strange apparel. What's that mean? God told them, don't you mix certain kinds of apparel under... Uh, Old Testament law, okay, for, for this people group. But they this was a rule that God gave them. They said, we're not going to listen to that. We're not going to listen to what God said. We're just going to do what we want. That is not a good attitude for a culture or society. To contradict God's law knowing what God says. And so this is where we're in a similar environment, maybe not as bad as it was, but in some ways maybe worse. And so they were not being accountable. Okay, we find that in verse number 12. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees that say in their heart. Now here's what they said. 
the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. They say, God's not going to judge us. God's so far away. We, he doesn't even notice what we're doing. And so that was not a good attitude to have because keep in mind, the Babylonians are coming. They're going to come in and they're going to wipe out their city. They're going to do all kinds of terrible things to their people. They're going to kill a bunch of the men and they're going to take a whole lot of people captive. So it's not going to be good. And God warned them, and this is what he told them they were doing. They were not living accountable. They just didn't care. Yes, sir. And then, and, and you know, you can go, and I talk to a lot of people, and uh, around here you can talk to some of these miners and some of these men, and you talk to them about the things, and they're, oh, yeah, yeah, that's your thing, you know, and, you know, holy roller and religious and, but they have no accountability in their mind. And so they were ready to implode. It's all going to go down. And we find that in verse 16 through 18. It says, A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and the high towers. What God's saying is the best defenses you have are not going to keep this from happening. And then he goes on. And... Uh, he says, verse 17, And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust. You know, we can't just perpetually continue to go on and go farther and farther away from God without any recompense. And so this is the kind of day it was, okay? Okay. And so then we get to chapter 2, and the, basically what we're looking at is what to do in this kind of day. What can you do if you do fear the Lord? What can you do if you do believe the Bible? What you can do? Because this is the backdrop of what it was like. And keep in mind, again, Zephaniah's name means Yahweh hides. And so what can you do? Well, you can take hope and encouragement because in chapter 2, look at verse number 3. It says, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. So these are people that fear God. Which have wrought his judgment. In other words, they know right from wrong and they're trying to do right. And it says, Seek righteousness, seek meekness. Now notice, it may be, ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So, I want you to notice this, and this encourages me. God is the one doing the hiding here. The individual's not doing the hiding. God's hiding you. You're not hiding yourself. It says, it may be ye will be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Now, there's, there are a lot of people, and they spend a lot of time trying to prepare for things that are going to come themselves, and uh, have a lot of fear attached to that. But what this does, it alleviates the fear God's the one that's in control. And if that's needed down the road, he's going to take care of it. Amen. Amen. So Joseph didn't spend his time worrying about Herod and all that Herod could do to him. He just, when God spoke, God gave him the way of escape and he, he went to Egypt. That was where he went. And so Elijah, God told him where to go. And God, he has that all worked out. So I'm not a prepper, but I tell preppers, hey, you're the one that has all the food. And so I'm going to let you do all the worrying, saving all the food. And then I'm going to come knock. You're my friend. I'm going to knock on your door and get some help man, right. if I need it. I had a friend that was a butcher, and, and uh, his name was Barry. And Barry, he had, you know, all kinds of meat. And as a butcher, he, he had people working for him and everything. And he'd come, and we'd talk. And uh, he thought the year 2000, you know, things are all going to change and everybody, all the food's going to run out. I said, Brother Barry, uh, you know, you're the one that has all the food. So um, I'm just going to let you worry about it. And if we need it, then, you know, I'll just go get it from you. And so look for your way of escape. And then chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, here's what you can do. And the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and folds for flocks. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. God says, look, I got a place for you. 
I'm going to care for you. He said, the coasts are going to be where you go for the house of Judah. And so, again, Zephaniah is preaching to the house of Judah. And so he is letting them know where to go. Now, in hard times, you can expect lean times. Talks about famine in verse 11. We can listen for God's voice. My sheep hear my voice. Chapter 3. Look at chapter 3 and verse 2. Notice, concerning Judah, who was disobeying God, she obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She drew not near. Then what can we do? Just the opposite. Right? Amen. Right. We can hear God's voice. We, not audibly. I'm talking about listening to God's voice. You know what he uses today? He uses his word. He uses preaching of the gospel. He uses the communication that he uses is mostly through that means. Through prayer, God speaking to your heart. Giving direction. And so we can find our place, find our escape, and we can listen to the voice of the Lord and, and respond to that. That's what we can do. Amen. And so uh, listen to the voice. It says they received and obeyed not, trusted not, they drew not near. They didn't listen. You know, you know what a church is? Do you know what it is? It's a place where people respond to the voice of God. Just going to church. He calls out people. But you know what we're finding today? They're not listening. And you know, I, some are. Praise the Lord for those that do. But many people, have you ever invited somebody? And they just, oh yeah, I'll do that someday. And they just put, procrastinate. And you know God's speaking to them. And then they just don't, they kind of put it off. And then they get a little harder to it. And they don't listen. <laughs> and so we need to listen. Amen? Amen. And be serious about God's word. This is what we can do. We can listen to God's voice. We can be serious about his word. Chapter 3 and verse 4. It says, her prophets are light and treacherous persons. So here's the preachers. They're, they're not serious about the things of the word. They're light. That means they're, they don't care. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. In other words, they begin to, to agree with what's wrong and go against on that which is right. And so we can be serious about God's word and review God's character. Okay? So if you get feel like, you know, you're discouraged, <laughs> look at the character of the Lord. Look, look what he's all about. Chapter 3 and verse 5. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. God is Amen. just. That's right. God is true. He is righteous. Sure. He will do no iniquity. God cannot do wrong. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. And so God is still in control. And we can look at his perfect character. He knows what he's doing. And we'd be wise to side with the Lord. Amen. And whatever we're doing. And look at God's perspective. And then here's another thing that they could do and we can do. In this environment, in an evil day, keep your eye on Israel. Just see what God's doing over there. He's performing something. He's doing something that proves that he is he is all-knowing and all-wise and he is fully aware of everything. And so chapter 3 and verse 9, notice, For then will I turn to the people a pure language. So he's talking about his people Israel. His people that are his remnant that would go back someday to the land and he'd restore unto them their nation even though they went through the, all these horrendous judgments, he would bring them back and he would give them their language back. 
Now, Eliezer ben Yehuda was a person that God raised up to help bring the nation's language back. Keep in mind, these people were scattered throughout the whole world. And they spoke every language of the world. And so they couldn't communicate well. So Eliezer ben Yehuda had on his heart to go there and bring back Hebrew. And this was a lost language. So he went looking for words everywhere. And he discovered words in other languages. And, and then he coined words and created words for new words. And created a dictionary. And today, Hebrew is spoken in Israel. And so God said that he'd do this right here. I will return unto them a pure language. He'd bring them back and he would restore their language. That's a great prophecy. And so we need to keep our eye on Israel. Watch God work his work at humbling the proud. God does that. And we find that in chapter 3, verse 11. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings whereof thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will... Take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. So God's saying, one day Israel's going to get, they're going to implode. They're going to go into captivity. But one day they're going to be restored, and they're going to have a different attitude. God's going to remove their idols. You know, Israel today is not known for a, a bunch of idols. But God rid them of their idols, he brought them back, and he humbled them. Amen. And so we can see that. And some other things we can do is trust God and experience his presence. That's verses 12 and 15. And so God said, I will leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and notice what they shall do. They shall trust in the name of the Lord. Amen. And so we can trust in the name of the Lord. And experience his presence. Verse 15. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. And so God's presence. Now what did Jesus say? What did he say? Anybody remember what Jesus said? I'll go with you Amen. to the what? End, the end of, the of the world. Amen. You believe that? Yes, sir. Okay, so we can claim that promise. And so have faith that one day God will turn it all around. He will. Okay, so I hope this, this message gives you encouragement. And uh, because, you know, we can get all focused on all, all that's going on. But we can also focus that God is great. God is greater than what's Amen. going on. And whatever circumstances that we're in, he's bigger and he can handle it. And we just need to trust him. He said, I'll go with you. And if it gets so bad, I mean, uh, it could come to a place where, you know, even like Elijah, you're a wanted person because you're telling the truth. Well, God can hide you. He can care for you. He can supply. Even if he puts the food in the beak of birds. And brings it to you. And so here's Elijah. He's uh, God's providing him the food that he needs to eat when he's by the brook Cherub. And uh, someone said that that food may have been, you know, ravens are thieves. I, they'll, they'll steal anything. I used to have a, a raven that followed me around named Gus. And I was about three years old. And he'd steal my diaper pins. <laughs> so, but, you know, these ravens. This raven may have gone to Ahab's table and got the best food that there was available. And, and he'd take Ahab's food and bring it out to Elijah and drop it. There's Jezebel's, you know, her favorite hors d'oeuvres and dropped right there in front of, in front of the preacher. And so God, he can care for his people. And so we, we you know, let's, let's just trust him. Trust the Lord. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. And we don't have to have fear. We don't have to have fear. Amen. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Now we can see all these threatening things around, 
but God can give safety in the midst of it. Right. And so if it, it gets worst case scenario, there's an there's an exit. It's up. Okay? Yeah. And so the rapture can take place. So we should be encouraged about that. Yes, sir. Amen? Yeah. Be encouraged. All right, so let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for your word. I pray that you would help us all, Lord, to be encouraged in uh, Lord, even though we see the times are getting tougher and it says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Lord, we know that you're in control. And Lord, I pray that you'd have your own way. Thank you for this book that we can look at. And Lord, this precedent of showing us that you can go with people no matter what. And Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to ask you all to sing another song over there and, and hide her, okay? All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly Oh